that's the stat in this. All right, if there's one thing, two things I don't like about Michigan, cold weather, and with that, snow. I know I'm living in the wrong place, right? But if there's one thing I do like, and there's a plethora of them around here, rotted out OBS Chevy trucks, baby. So we're going to pick up one, or hopefully pick up one, that's a potential money maker. So with the snow and the cold weather, you gotta move that snow around somehow. I'm talking plow truck, baby. So it's a 97 K2500. It's a crank no start. I think I might have an idea on what the issue is, but uh, it's about 40 minutes away. I got the truck and trailer already hooked up. So I'm gonna take a little ride out there and uh, hopefully it's not too bad. The pictures make it look okay. I mean, like I said, it's a rusty truck. I'm expecting that. But as long as the frame's good, uh, probably take this sucker home and hopefully get it running quick. All right, ended up picking up the plow truck. Wasn't able to film anything uh, with the pickup process because it's getting super dark, super early here. Tried to do some stuff. The lighting just wouldn't cooperate. Just looked like garbage. So we got the truck. Thank God for the winch on this trailer. Made it pretty easy. Uh, you know, turns out, uh, no surprise, truck wasn't as nice as it was in the pictures. You get that with pretty much any truck that's from Michigan, especially a plow truck. But went up there, uh, got the guy to come down and price to where we needed it to be. And, you know, I, I just had to have it. So let's take a look at this thing. <laughs> yeah, there she is, folks. Look at this thing. <laughs> 97K2500. Altini hubcaps on this side, not on the other side. Western plow. Uh, 350 Vortec motor, uh, box that's a tad uh, decapitated. There's some lumber holding it on. Might address that, might not. But a uh, big thing with this is it's a uh, crank no start. So motor rolls over, but I didn't actually hear the uh, engine run. Took a pretty big risk on this, not hearing the engine run. Obviously, the engine doesn't run. You can't see if the transmission shifts. You don't really know if anything's good or not. But uh, got enough stuff on it like probably part it out make my money back so i figured it was worth a risk so but if it does run uh we'll be able to you know do a couple things to get this thing into a more valuable position and hopefully just sell it to someone that wants a plow truck so i had thought about maybe keeping this i'm leaning towards not just because of the overall condition is uh, like i said a little bit more rough than i thought but could still make someone a decent truck that can make some money so we're gonna work on getting this thing off the trailer. It was kind of a pain because of the approach angle of the trailer with the plow on the front. So I'm gonna to have to source some wood so the plow can kind of drag down the ramps. But once we get it off, we'll uh, see if we can get this thing fired up. All right, so when we got there, the batteries were dead in this thing. Uh, he had it on the charger. I don't know if it'll still uh, crank or not. Probably won't. Yeah, she's dead, so I guess first thing is uh was push off the trailer and I'll try and get it inside to take a look at this thing. Well it's a couple days later. It's super dark out. It's barely even six o'clock. I complained about that before. I'll try and spare you guys from any more complaining about the darkness outside. But you see the plow truck right there. We got that unloaded a couple days ago. Haven't really touched it since. The batteries in it are dead. The batteries were dead when we went to go pick it up. That kind of made it a pain to get on the trailer, had to winch it up. So I'm going to pull the batteries out of it. And because this is a, you know, budget oriented truck, I'm going to try and charge them up and hopefully they can keep and maintain a charge. Don't really want to have to put batteries in this thing. The price of batteries, uh, crazy. I like a lot of other stuff, but especially batteries. I mean, like $200 for a okay battery these days nuts so budget in mind i'm gonna pull the batteries out charge them up and once the batteries are hopefully charged up and you know maintaining that charge we'll throw them back in and we'll be able to crank this thing over spray a little starting fluid in the old throttle of this thing and see if it fires up like i said don't hear the fuel pump prime in it so i think that's the issue uh but if it runs on the starting fluid uh focus uh most of my attention in that general area so I've got some custom ideas on uh, how we're going to change that. Not the best way, but for this truck, it's definitely the best way. So stick around for a minute. Sometimes you just have to question what goes through people's minds. So I got 
both the terminals undone from this battery and I'm trying to remove the, well, I still need to take out the hold down, but uh, someone made the genius idea or the uh, genius uh, implementation of this ground wire uh, running it through the battery. So now instead of just disconnecting this, uh, I have to disconnect it from the truck because this terminal is not coming out. So I don't know, guys. Day in and day out, I just am more solidified with the idea that people shouldn't touch vehicles. Just a horrible, horrible experience most of the time. When people work on stuff and they have no clue what they're doing. Oh well, we'll get it figured out. Well, windy day working on the rot buggy plow truck. We got uh, the two batteries trying to charge up. Really don't want to have to buy batteries for this thing, so we're going to give them some time still. They've been charging on and off the past few days. We've got a brand used battery over here. We're just going to see if we can get that installed and see if we can get the truck fired up with this. So just throw this thing in here. hook some cables up and try cranking it over. All right, got some fuel pump in a can. We're gonna throw this in the old throttle body. All right, see if she'll go. Yeah, hang on a second. All right, I'm giving this thing more of a direct path. All right, try it. Whoa, that's a good one. Oh yeah. Huh? All right, super relieved to hear the old rot buggy plow truck run. No engine noises, seemingly. Uh, I just put my ear by the filler neck of the gas tank and had my dad key it up. And turns out the fuel pump does prime, so maybe it's just out of gas. We got a couple gallons of gas here. We're just going to put that in there and see if it runs. Who knows? <laughs> it might just need gas. All right, we just threw, I don't know, a gallon or two of gas in, so we're going to see if it uh, if it just needs some gas, which if it did, it'd be a great story for this thing. Want to run? Let me give it a squirt. All right, shouldn't quite take off. I'm going to need to get a different can of starting fluid, but... All right, try it. We're gonna try and start it on its own now with, uh, with no starting fluid. We'll see what happens. Beauty! Wow, it moves in reverse.
that thing go right there. Look at all that. Good drinking water there. Nice. We gotta get rid of these Altini hubcaps. These things are the worst. What a rig. Oh, she's a little cold, a little cold blooded. Well, the rot buggy plow truck is in, well, decent shape. So I spent the last couple hours dressing some wiring issues. The, uh, the light wiring just started smoking when we were trying to get the plow to turn to the left. And so I had to redo pretty much all the wiring for the lights because the power wire melted up, the ground wire melted. It was pretty bad. So redid all that. We were having issues with the controller not lighting up when this was going on so we came to the conclusion we had a ground problem and as soon as we uh, went from the battery negative terminal to uh, the pump ground over there just with a jumper cable things started working flawlessly so uh, upon further inspection we disconnected our plug here this goes directly to the battery and there was a really poor terminal fit here so uh, let me pop this apart real quick here you can see these male terminals they uh they were kind of scrunched together so it was kind of a loose fit in there if you can see there's a little slot in there i just stuck a pry bar in there and spread them out a little bit and plugged it back in as soon as i did that everything was good so this thing's actually in pretty good shape now i am gonna have to get a uh, set of batteries for this thing so they uh the one the primary one ended up not taking a charge and put it in here started super hard so we got our jumper battery in here now that one's decent but uh, i'm just gonna get two batteries probably go with some blems or some cheapos but be definitely better than what we got in here now also gonna run a bigger power wire uh, from this battery over to that one you can see there all they have is that small gauge wiring over there i don't even know what specifically that's going to with some solenoid or something i'm not sure but uh we want to have these two connected together for sure so we'll get that but other than that this thing's uh, in great shape it runs good maybe we'll run it down the road and put some more gas in it and see how she drives all right we're in the rock buggy got my dad he's gonna follow me in case uh something happens with thing this thing we run out of gas or uh breaks down we'll see i'm excited to see how it drives though Hopefully it has all the gears and the trans, that'd be nice. Okay, it's got second. get on the, the brakes a little bit early just in case <laughs> okay temp wise uh we're a little warm a little warmer than i'd like to see had an issue with the uh thermostat before i think it was sticking uh if it doesn't start coming down we're gonna have to pull this thing over need to put a thermostat in this. Yeah, I don't think the hood's fully latched, so might uh, might take it a little bit slower. I don't really want that to come up, but I also don't want to pull over on the side of the road right now. It's a gamble. All right, we're approaching the gas station. It's literally right there.
Yeah, I think I'll probably put a thermostat in. It's done that weird thing with the temperature a couple times now, so uh, I'd rather not have to deal with that. Overheating, bad deal. Oil pressure in this thing, though. Fuck. You can't beat it. Well, pulling out of the gas station just threw 35 bucks on this unit. Maybe I'll put some fuel system cleaner in it or something, but well, this thing's robust. Chevy Tough, baby. That mirror, I think I got a solution for that. Well, we just got back and I got out of the truck, smelled a little gas, and think I figured out why it was out of gas. So we got ourselves, a, you can kind of see on the frame, a little wet there. She's leaking fuel from somewhere. I don't know exactly where. Oh, that's some cut wires there. That's cool. Let's see. Oh. Is that it right there? I didn't grab a light, guys. Stand by. Well, guys, I'm in the bed of the rot buggy. And hang on, let me wipe this lens off. I mean, I've, this is comical. I've never seen such a variety of materials holding together a pickup bit before check this out so we lifted the bed liner up a little bit no big deal just wanted to make sure that uh you know the fuel lines on top of the fuel pump weren't uh weren't leaking rotted out you can see here there's some timber uh there was timber holding this plexiglass down kind of was sandwiched uh in there we got some some fence posts we got ratchet straps um yeah, I mean, everything besides metal. So the unfortunate part is uh, the gas tank's rotted out. So that's where our gas went, all evaporated. There's a big hole right in here. Uh, I don't know, you can't really see it. I'll try and maybe turn the light on. You can see uh, ugh, it's all wet in there. Moist. Yeah, look at that hole. Jeez, oh man. So to get this thing on the road, we're going to come in slightly above budget by the time we put some batteries in this and put a gas tank in, but uh, we got it running for zero dollars, so that's pretty cool. So I get, I'm not really excited for some snow, but at the same time, I'm kind of excited for some snow to see what this thing can do. So uh, I think probably end of the day, I'm going to have a couple hundred bucks into this thing and it should be pretty reliable. I mean, had it going 60 some miles an hour down the road it was pretty smooth. Can't complain about that for a sub thousand dollar truck. So uh, I'm gonna make a little bit of a list, figure out what I need. There's some cheap improvements we're gonna be able to do this thing. We'll get the box a little bit less uh, cobbled than what that is for minimal money. And just get this thing going down the road and ready to push some snow. So appreciate you guys supporting this matter. Let me know if you guys got any ideas for must haves for this plow truck or things you wanna see me do with it. I don't know, what, whatever you guys think, I'm open to whatever. And, uh, yeah, we'll wait for some snow to fly and get this thing moving. I'm going to order some parts soon, and she'll be a good unit. So, again, appreciate your support in this matter. We'll see you in a couple days.